Glossy friends and welcome back to my channel. Warm, warm welcomes to you all. Massive warm welcomes to all those lovely new subscribers. If you haven't subscribed already and you like what you see, please don't forget to hit the little subscribe button below. Give me a little thumbs up to let me know you like it and that way you'll never miss any further uploads. Wow, people, it's October. It's almost like I blinked and time just shot past. It was like, the last thing I remember, it was sort of the end of August and, and now it's like the beginning of October. It has been a whirlwind, a total whirlwind. Can you hear that? Can you? Can you hear that silence? It's just heavenly. <laughs> this is the first time in, well, I can't even remember how long, that I actually have the house to myself. It is just me, the dog, and you. And it's fabulous. The only thing I can hear is fudge breathing. It's just like, it's bliss, utter bliss. Hence the reason why I've actually found the time to do this video. And I thought to myself, although I've got a bit of, I confess people, I've got a bit of a headache today. I don't think I'm on my game today. But I knew that if I didn't get this video done, it just wouldn't happen. And I've been so good at making sure I get a video up a month that I was just like, no, this is your opportunity. This is your time. So yeah, you'll just have to take me as I am. So if I'm all over the place today, please excuse me. So what to tell you, what has been happening? Well. For those of you that watched my bead with me on Evening in the Park, you will know that things have been a bit chaotic here. Um, my husband has broken his leg, of which he's broken his driving leg. So not only can he not work, and he's on crutches, and he's got a plaster cast on, but he also can't drive the car. So he can't really go out without needing assistance. Needless to say that not only am I a carer, and a full-time worker, and a dog walker, and a personal shopping service and a house cleaner but I'm also now a chauffeur <laughs> so I just feel like I'm being, I've been pulled in all these different directions I mean I need at least another 20 sets of arms is it's official that along with the fact that I've actually had some issues with my hip um, and I've been seeing a consultant for that Originally, we were thinking we was just going to go down the whole, let's just get the hip replacement done. But now, a slight change of plan. The decision has been made that I'm going to try and have an injection under a general anaesthetic, which might bide me a bit more time. We're not sure, but as I said, let's just try. If we try it, then we know whether it fixes it for a while. And then as and when the time comes that it's no longer fixing it, then we can go on and do the hip replacement. So yeah, so I'm hobbling around. Husband is really hobbling around. Yeah, it's just been craziness. It's been craziness to get any, everything and anything done. But that said, I was sitting there thinking with so limited time, I'm not really gonna have anything to show you because I'm not gonna get any stitching done. And I've got to say, that is so not the case. I don't know if it's because husband was such a grouch and needed a bit of time out and I needed some very needed me time time out um, that my best options were either through the day hiding in the office whilst I was working and instead of coming out like I normally would I didn't I just stayed in there and then in the evenings rather than sit in the living room with him and watch tv and all those things there were times that he really did not need company or want company and I didn't want his company so I sloped off into the bedroom, stuck my lovely floss tube on um, and had my time out while stitching. So although I've been super busy and I feel like I'm being pulled in all these different directions, I still feel, <laughs> believe it or not, that I've achieved some stuff. So I do have stuff to show you. Shock horror. Surprise, surprise, people. So what to say to you? So for those of you that left me so many wonderful comments on the bead with me video you know with your support and let me know i'm not the only person that's got a husband that is a terrible terrible patient it just does it does sort of set me in a correction mindset that it's like well, it's not just me <laughs> anyone that's been married to someone for as long as i have is probably in totally the same boat because most men are not very good patients not saying all of them some of them are probably fantastic 
mine not so much. Um, so what have I managed to achieve this, this month? Now when I say this month, the last monthly update that I did I think was on August the 19th. So although this is September update, it's actually got a little portion of the end of August in it. So maybe that's why it looks like there's more here than I was expecting, who knows. So first up was um, Whipgo. So Whipgo for September was um, two numbers which actually brought the same project up. So it, to complete my Whipgo for September, I needed to do 200 stitches in Peacock Lagoon or Peacock's Lagoon by having their design. Here is what it will look like if I ever finish it. It's a beautiful chart. And about now, I should be showing you a picture of where you last saw it. So this got at least 200 stitches. And I'm gonna apologize now for the fact that it's all scrunched up. But this is where we've got to. So I've been working on this section here and I think it's gone pretty quickly because it's the background. So there was like lots of like blocky color, which was, yeah, done me a huge favor having blocky color. Because when you're over in this section, that is, that is very slow going. This is being stitched on 25 count magic guide in half stitch. So, that also makes it go much faster because I'm not doing a full cross. I can't imagine doing this project with full cross because I don't think I would ever complete it in my lifetime because it's just so big. So that completed my whip go for September. And like I said, I was doing a bead with me video. So you know that I got some time on my evening in the park. So Peacock's Lagoon got two days of stitching. Evening in the park got 10 days, 10 days of touch time, whether that be beading or stitching. So I did a bead with me, like I say. So I've gone in and put some beads on. Let me see if I can balance this. So where did we get to? So let's just give you a full view. So there's the full view of where she's at. So at last I feel like the top section starting to come together a bit more now. Um, I'd already done all of the specialty stitches on this side and I would, I'd worked on most of the specialty stitches on this side on a previous video. So this month I have, let's have a look. So we had a bit of an issue with the trees. So I'd done the trees, but in actual fact, I'd messed one of the trees up. So I needed to rip all the tree out and redo it. So I did that. I've done some of the snow. I've put the back stitch into both of the trees. Um, as part of my bead with me, I've completed the rest of the beads on this side of the gate. Um, finished the beads up here and then I went on to beads, oh sorry, bouncing you around now, to bead the section that I'd put some of the specialty stitches in. So as you can see, you've got these beads here and all throughout this section I've beaded. I also put the metallic thread, Let's see if I can bring you in. I'd already done the metallic thread, so I did that bit. I can't see what you can see, but yeah. So I'm feeling quite happy with where we got to on that one. So I've beaded everything on this side that needs to be done. We've still got sort of this border down here with some more trees and lanterns, but I think I need to go over and put the beads into this section to complete the top section and then I'll start working my way down. But yeah, I mean, although I don't feel like I've done a massive amount on there, I have actually done quite a bit. So I'm quite impressed with that. And I absolutely love working on it, as you know. Um, I've had lots of questions about people sort of saying to me, how do I, 
how do I get around the whole having beads and stitching on this and still having it on the scroll bar? So let me show you how I do that. So I just use felt. Just, you know, your normal, your normal felt stuff. So because I don't want to leave all the beading to the end and I want to fill it in as I go, what I do is, it's a bit difficult to explain this, I'll show this whilst I'm, whilst I'm actually uh, holding it up in the air, but let me see if I can show you what I mean. So, now I've got lots of different strips of this. So all I do, let me show you, is I lay the felt as I, like at the top. So as soon as I get to a bit that's beaded, I lay the felt over and then I wrap it, like so. And then obviously, any bits, as I, as I go down, I'll end up with sort of a whole layer of, of felt over the stitching that's got the beads on. So I'll stick that bit there and then carry on rolling. And then say for instance, I was working on, I don't know, this section here. Although it's all rolled up, it's now protected. So no beads are gonna get crushed, nothing's getting squished, and I can still have my fabric very, very tall. But I've got this layer of felt that's rolled into the project. So that's how I get around being able to stitch and bead and yet still work with it on the scroll bars. So if I roll that back up now, like I normally would, that is super squishy because there's so much felt in there with it. But that's, I mean, this is how I store my bars. So get my bar stores so I've got these that come with it I know a lot of people just tie them together but I've actually got these which is what holds my projects like so but and I will leave that felt rolled inside there while it's in storage as well so not only when I'm stitching do I put the felt on the felt is actually kept in there to protect everything when it goes into storage because I keep it on the bars and just put it into this little sleeve thing that I make so that I can hang my projects like that. And then I put like a little label on there so I know what project it is. This bag actually isn't for these bars, it's a different bag, but that's perfectly fine. It's got a little hanger on the top, and then I hang it up in the study when it's not actually being worked on. But all the time that it has that felt on it, or in it, rolled in it, it's protecting the stitching, it's protecting the beads, nothing's being squished. Um, so that was Evening in the Park. So Evening in the Park, that is stitched on a 25 count hand dye fabric by Stephanie in the colorway Abyss. I think it's been discontinued now, so I don't think you can get your hands on that one. Um, so what else did I work on? So I also worked on the lovely alternative reality. I was working on this in August and then carried on and did another couple of days since you last saw it. So this is the lovely alternative reality. Again, heaven and earth design. Uh, this one is a Josephine wall design where you last saw it. You should be seeing a picture of that now. And this is where I've got to on this one. So there we go. So I've been working, hold up. So I've been working on this portion here and just slowly making my way through the confetti. 
everything to do with Josephine Walls is confetti. So, but I love this piece. Absolutely love it. So like I say, this one, it got two days of stitching. And this is stitched on 25 count Ecru Magic Guide. And I'm doing that one over one in full cross. Love that one, as you know. That one always requires a bit of daytime stitching though because I really have to have good light and I have to have my mag eyes on for that because I just find that it's, yeah, a little harder on the eyes than some of the others. Um, what else have I been doing, people? So also, I worked on one of my newer projects. Just something that wouldn't test my brain too much. I haven't done a lot on it, admittedly. And that is the Long Dog Sampler, Castles in the Air. This is the design. And about now should be where you last saw this one. And this is where we got to, she says. Let me unravel it. So, oh, there we go. So this is the one that I am stitching on. Mm. What am I stitching this one on? I don't know. I'll put it in the description box below of what the fabric is. But the grey fabric or the, the grey thread is a silk thread. It's a silk for you um, in colourway. I think it's PR161. And then where I see fit, with no rhyme or reason, I'm using a petite treasure braid. just for a spot of colour and so the bit that I've done since we last saw it is this little bit here so I decided that I wanted a little pink crown so I've done a little pink crown and now I'm starting to work my way down there so yeah absolutely love this one doesn't require too much thought process apart from do I want to change the colour of that little thing there so yeah so that has had some love. Um, what else? So that one, Castle in the Air, Castles in the Air, got three days worth of stitching. And I love the Silks for You um, silk thread for that piece. What else did we stitch on? So we also, we might as well stay on the trend of Heaven and Earth design, mightn't we? So the next one that I have worked on, which was in desperate need, because I think it had been very much neglected, is the lovely Heaven and Earth Design Mini Red Queen Red Dragon. Absolutely love this one. This is the one that I've been stitching on just recently, so it's still on the frame. Um, and this one got six evenings. And when I say evenings, I'm sort of saying you know, the odd half an hour or hour here and there when I could tolerate being in the same room as my very miserable husband. <laughs> so, about now should be where you last saw it. And this is where we are at now. Let me put something behind it. So, here we go. So you can just see, look, we have a dragon. A draglin? Is it a draglin? What do they call baby dragons? Well, we've got him. So we've got a piece of his wing and we've just got to his face. So, so excited about that. So yeah, very, very happy with my little draglin. I might have to name him. Not quite sure what I'm going to name him. But I was really annoyed with myself because I've obviously been switching out some of my DMC threads recently across projects. And 
when I got to this section where you can see there's there's some stitches that are missing in him when I got to this section I've been on a massive DMC thread hunt all over the house all, all through through all my projects and would you believe that I'm missing some thread so I, I had to put an order in with the lovely Kate at Lakeside Needlecrafts and I think I just ordered like two or three um, DMC's because I'm like well I can't finish the block and I've got a bit of an OCD thing about that that I've feel bad about leaving it with holes in it especially when it's like a piece like that see now when we're working on these big heaven and earths you know if you if you run out of threads and you need to wait for something that's in the background you don't really feel that it's a problem to leave that but when you've got a piece which is actually showing something where all of a sudden it's like well if you get the rest of those stitches in you can really see what that is yeah that just makes me, I've, like, I've got to have the thread. I need to finish it. So I'd already put one order in and then I had to put another order in just for another few threads just so that I could get the threads to finish this block. In fact, I think what I might do is today, if I get a chance, um, I might finish this, finish this block here just so that I can have his head and his face and then switch this project out. But as you can see, I was in such, well, because, because all of a sudden I could see what I was looking at was, was the draglin, instead of doing my usual 10 by 10 blocks in staggers like I normally do, I got very impatient and decided that I was just going to keep working my way across because I just wanted to see his little face. And then once I get past there and I can actually see him properly, then I will revert back to my normal 10 by 10 staggered blocks. But I was just too excited because I can actually see something other than trees. So yeah, very, very happy with the progress on that one. So like I say, I think I will just fill him in now that I've got the colours that were needed and finish that last little section so that I've got his face completely done. And then I will switch that project out. So... Mini Red Queen Red Dragon got six days worth of stitching. That one is stitched on, she says. This one is being stitched on a 28 count magic guide, two over one half stitch. So again, I wanted it to be a bit faster than, than the full cross. So that was that one. So that was, I think, all of the heaven and earth designs. Was it? Yes, it was. So next up, oh, what else have we done? So finally on the projects that you all know about is the lovely Andromeda. Or in my case, the not so lovely Andromeda. And I'd been working on this one. I'd put it on my little, my little stand. My little Velka Potoki mini. And I was working on this through the days when I was in the office and I was on a conference call or, you know, on my lunch. But you'll all know that I had a bit of a thing about it wasn't going so well with her because of her face. Well, there was a lovely lady Oh, quite a while back now when I first said that I've got an issue with the face that reached out to me and said do you want to sort of do you want me to have a little look close up if you can take a picture of your stitching close up I can have a little look and tell you if I can work out where you've gone wrong because I had gone wrong so the lovely Welsh stitcher on Instagram Welsh stitcher Kelly I sent her a little picture of my stitching she had a good look at it for me and then she told me where I'd gone wrong and what I needed sort of to do to make it look a bit better than it did because she looked like someone had smushed her in the face so because I'd already the last time you saw it I think I did a stitch with me sounds like the daughter's home hello daughter hello. so I am recording. Do you want to come and say hi? So the last time you saw this, we was doing a stitch with me and I was working on this bottom section. Right here. And I've even left outlines. 
That's pretty. Do you like it? Well, you know, you bought this for me for my birthday. Yeah, you've been working on it for a very long time. Say hello to the people. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Lauren sold her first car today. Her oh, first ever God. car. A little baby. So Adam Energizer. Seeing it go down the road. I want to cry. <laughs> it's okay. She gets her new car on Thursday. Yeah. So, so is dad okay? Yeah, he's good. I dropped him off at the gym. Is he happy? Car. Yeah, yeah. He, well, he had to go everywhere on crutches, so he wasn't so happy. And he was complaining that... He had to go everywhere on crutches, obviously. So. Like I say, yeah. worst patient in the world. Mm, yeah. If you was to rate your dad out of ten, like as the worst patient being ten and the best patient being one, where would he be? Well, he's bad enough thing? when he says he's got man flu when he's got a cold, <laughs> let alone when he when he breaks his leg and there's actually something wrong with him. He's thinking he said ten out of ten, worst thing that could ever happen. Yeah. yeah. See, and it's not just mm. me. It's not just me. No, I don't think it's just you. The daughter backs me well, up. Well, now with a taxi for him, so. Yeah, like I say, mm. chauffeur service. <laughs> I put Lauren on my insurance so that she could still help me with I the taxi servicing. Do your thing. Thank you, sweets. Because I was just like, I can't do it all. So I'm like, at least if Lauren can drive my car, and she's without a car now, at least until Thursday next week, at least if I put her on the insurance just for a short space of time it just takes the pressure off and then when when i phoned the insurance company and said how much would it be to put my daughter on as a temporary insurance cover and i think they said it was like 50 quid 50 quid for seven days curse darren's like, that's really expensive and i turned around and went for my sanity that is not expensive that is cheap as chips <laughs> so <laughs> needless to say i paid 50 quid and put lauren on my insurance Right, back to the project, sorry. Quick divert there. So like I said to you, so the last time I was working on this was down here, where I was filling in the rock that she's sitting on. But because the lovely Welsh stitcher Kelly had given me the information that I needed for the top and I wanted to sort of love her, I decided to go in and sort of change things up, do a bit more skin. And whilst I was there, try and sort the face out. And I think, I think we fixed it. I don't think she looks like she's been smooshed now. Or if she does, let me just check. Does she? No. See, it looks like she's got a nose now. I think she looks like she's got a nose now. So I've been working on her. I filled in, obviously, because I had to make some adjustments to the face, I needed to adjust some bits and pieces of the skin. Um, so I've started working on the hands and working down the arms. Of course, the skin's one over one, just for my sins. But she is slowly getting there. She does need a bit of love again this month, I think. But it's a bit like all my projects at the moment. I feel like they all need a bit of love. But I fell down a bit of a rabbit hole. But... I'll share that with you <laughs> as we go. Um, so fabric for this one, oh, I'm going to have to put it at the bottom because I've completely forgotten what the fabric is or what size it is. I need to put little stickers on the bottoms of my fabric, I think. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll make some little stickers to go on the bottom so that when I'm telling you. But this one is predominantly stitched two over two. I think it's a 28 count fabric and I think it's a chromatic alchemy, but I'll put it down here so that you can see. Um, the skin I am stitching on this is one over one. The joy. But it is always worth it at the end. I personally think it's worth it for me. I like the, I like the effect of the delicateness of the skin. So Andromeda got, Andromeda got four days. Four days of face resurrection. It was like she, I don't know. <laughs> it was like she was having a facelift. <laughs> so we facelifted her. So that is Andromeda. So that is everything that you knew I was stitching on, wasn't it? Um, so what else to tell you? The birthday. You all know that I was waiting for my fabric to turn up for my new project and i'm pleased to say that the fabric did come it came from pole stitches and the fabric that i went with believe it or not was the same one that i worked on for 
Roses of Provence. So the piece that I got the fabric for is the Elizabeth Weston, Hands Across the Sea. Here is what it will look like. Love this chart. And I've decided that I'm going to keep the verse because I quite like the verse. Because it's about parents, which sort of, yeah, sort of resonates with me. But instead of putting Elizabeth Weston, age 11 years, and then that, I'm going to put my name, the date that I started it, or the year that I started it, and then I will fill in the year that I finish it. So instead of putting that bit in, that's what I'm going to rechart into there. But yeah. This is all being done with the silk threads, the Vero Soir. Absolutely love the Vero Soir. Look at those colours. I love it. Absolutely love it. So I sorted all my colours out. And you could stroke these indefinitely. When the fabric turned up, so the fabric that I decided to use was, like I say, it is the... Belfast linen the roses of Provence I did on a 28 count this time because I did want a 36 fabric a 36 count linen but she didn't have any in stock so the only way to get around that was to go with the 32 so the 32 is it's 32 count Belfast linen in the colourway Tudor Rose. I think I might have showed the fabric. Might not have. But it's getting a bit washed out in the light here. But let me see if I can. I wanted it to try and replicate as best I could um, the fabric that looks like it was used for this. So if I hold that up there, it just looks sort of similar. So that was what I decided to go with. There you go. And you can see how it's nicely mottled. So because of course, the first thing I did, because 32 count, I don't really work on 32 count, i done a bit of test stitching. Now the chart actually says that for 36 count onwards, they stitch it one over one, which was what, um, not one over one, uh, one thread. So I was hoping that I was going to get away with the one, one thread because, yeah, because it's, one, there's less thread needed. And two, when you've got one thread, there's less to worry about with the whole making sure your stitches don't look all, you know, puffy and squishy. And But when I test stitch this, and I'm sure you're going to agree, so I've, I've kept the test stitch on the, the bit that I cut off the fabric because the fabric's enormous. When you actually see the size of this project, it's like, oh... <gasps> Um, so yeah, so I test stitched, let me see if I can get this in, there we go. So as you can see, that is one over one, oh sorry, that is one strand, and that there is the two strands. So of course, being that I love good coverage, I had to go with the two strands. personally I mean it's it's much more puffy but there's just too much fabric showing with one strand there's just I can see too much fabric there do you agree it's a bit late if you don't agree because I already started it so of course after I did my test stitching on the day of my birthday I specifically said to my husband I do not want anyone around my house I said I don't want anyone or anything or any interruptions on the evening of my birthday because it's my birthday and I want to just sit and stitch my project on my birthday. So needless to say, now, disclaimer from myself here, I originally put this on my scroll bars but because the fabric is so loose and floppy and it was so wide, and my husband had taken charge of the table because he was playing with his little toy cars. The only place for me to actually do anything was to actually do it on the floor. So I was trying to put it on scroll bars whilst it was on the floor. 
it wasn't working very well so it ended up that it was tight on both sides and really loose in the middle so I gave up with that because I couldn't be I couldn't be bothered to try and clear the table of all of his racing car stuff to to redo it so I decided to just put it on a Q-snap for now so like I say this is Elizabeth Weston and it's stitched on Pole Stitches Fabric 32 Camp Belfast Linen and this got how many days did this get? this got three days of stitching and this is where I got to and I love the coverage it's a bit of a pain I'll be honest it's a bit of a pain stitching two two strands over two but I love the effect so I'm happy but bear in mind that this is like just the border this is like a tiny portion of the border and when I was sort of stitching all this I was like wow it's gonna take forever because there is just so much so much like these, these are these are huge for a border oh I thought they were my like, wow so yeah I think this is going to be one of those projects that I'm still doing when I'm like 90 years old I don't know maybe I'll get a rhythm for it but at the moment I'm just like oh it's a lot bigger than I realized it's actually a very very big design so I think the finished let me give you the finished yeah so I was planning to do it on a 36 count so if I'd, have, if I'd have done it on a 36 count it would have been 24 inches by 24 nearly 25 inches but because they didn't have the fabric and I've switched it to a 32 it's now 27 inches by 28 inches which yeah I mean bear in mind look it's only when I do this that I sit there and go, wow, that's a bigger baby than I thought it was. But if I hold the book. So all that stitching there, which looks huge there, is actually only this tiny little bit here. And when you see how many of those I've got, yeah, you sort of get the idea. But it's too late, I can't. I've already bought the fabric. The fabric cost me a small fortune, purely because the size that it needed to be. So it is what it is, and it will just have to be a giant. But then you know how much I love a giant project. Not. So there we go. So that was my birthday new start. Absolutely love this piece. Love the fabric, love the colors love the Avera Schwarz. Not sure I'm loving the fact that it's as big as it is now that it's on the small account fabric. And I would have preferred if I could have to have done it one strand over two, then that would have been more preferential, but it's not and it can't be, so it isn't. So that was that project. Now, Don't ask me how this happened, because I still don't know how, but I just, I don't know. I was watching lots of floss tubes, so like I say, for my time out, I needed some time out. So my time out was I'm going to go in the, in the bedroom and watch some floss tube. And I got a bit inspired, I've got to say. I mean, normally I sort of go, I have go-to floss tubers, and I'm sure you all do, because it's what we do. You know, you find someone that you really like, and then... If you're on limited time, you don't just get to sort of scroll through loads and loads of floss tube videos and find people that you've never found before. You have certain people that you just sort of go to. I've got a few that I just sort of go to, but because I've been watching it and just letting it roll like on an auto roll, and then seeing like people pop up in my suggested, I've actually found some more floss tubers that I hadn't watched before. So I fell down that rabbit hole of like subscribe, subscribe, so yeah, I've got loads of new floss tubers in my feed now. Just off the top of my head that I could jot down that I remembered. So Helen D. Helen D was sort of the instigator of this next rabbit hole. Um, but I was also watching Amy Loves Toads. 
And Java Girl Stitches, she sort of inspired me. And then there was Mama Loves You, GB Michelle. She was doing more about the samplers, which sort of was, yeah, like the hands across the sea samplers and the reproductive samplers. So yeah, I feel like I've like, you know, got totally inspired by, by people, either new people or people that I normally watch. But honestly, I think the, the main instigator of, of this particular one was Helen D. So Helen D done, I don't know, I think she done like a, a welcome, was it welcome? I don't know, it was like a board with some things that were hanging down and that she'd done like, I don't know, some, some smalls that you hang off of it to say the words or something along that lines. And while I was looking at it, he's like, do you know what, I really do need like something that's like, you know, seasonal, a bit of seasonal stitching, you know, something that's a little bit, you know, small or smaller than all my other projects. And then this happened. I really don't know what to say. Because not only did it happen, but I got so engrossed in it that I've almost finished it. Almost, she says, begrudgingly, because I haven't actually finished it. So the piece that I got, and I know you're going to go shock horror because I don't normally do things like this, is the Cricut Collection Autumn. So there it is. And it's got little pumpkins on there and a spider and a wren and an owl and a, a cat and a turkey. Yeah, who would have thought? But I've absolutely had a blast with it. And I think because I've had so much of a blast with it, I just didn't want to put it down. So I didn't. And this is where I got to. I know, right? Are you as confused as me as to how this has managed to happen? Because it's just so not me. It's so not me, so unlike me. The fabric, this particular fabric, I did actually have started my, I don't know, family tree thing that I originally looked at doing. And then when I started stitching on it, I didn't like it at all, so I just, left the stitches in it. So when I saw this fabric and was like, do you know what, this will work perfectly for this. I took the stitches out and started stitching on this one. So the fabric for this one is a chromatic alchemy. Right, so it is. Chromatic alchemy, 28 camp Brittany Lugana in the colorway Ferenia. So I made some changes so some of the called for threads on this piece. Um, so let me start at this end. What did we change? So the moon here, this little half moon bit, um, required just a standard thread. I decided that I would switch that, or not switch it, I stitched it in the color that was required and then decided I would try some of the glow in the dark um, Krennic. So it's a very fine braid Krennic in 052F. Um, I've got to be honest, I've, I've put it in a dark room. I don't really see any glow in the dark. <laughs> but So yeah, I'm not sure whether I'm going to keep that in or take that out, but Maybe I'll just keep it in. Um, what else did I do? So I also made a change to the pumpkin hat. I don't know if you can see this, but can you see it sparkling? Is it sparkling? So I switched, I say switched out. I decided that I wanted a sparkly hat on my pumpkin. So for the sparkly hat on the pumpkin, I decided to switch out the DMC black and I used the petite, no, the, yeah, petite treasure braid in PB05. So this is what I used. See his shine? So when I wiggle him around, I can see the sparkle of that, but I don't think you can. Um, what else did we do? Um, 
I decided that the little owl at the top, middle friend up here, he was just a flat brown. I decided that again, I wanted to make him all fluffy, which he does look very fluffy, she says, with get the dog hair off of him. You see how fluffy he is? I've still got to do his eyes. Now, there's supposed to be back stitches in there. Uh, not back stitches. Um, French knots for his eyes. But I think I might use beads for his eyes. Um, I switched him out for uh, a whisper thread. Um, w123. So I stitched him in that. So that he was a fluffy. So he looked like an owl. Um, and what else did I change? I kept the spider. I wasn't too sure whether I wanted to keep the spider because I'm not a spider lover, but I think he looks quite cute. I kept the cherries the way they were. And then for the pussy tat, so here's the pussy tat. I decided to do the same thing for the pussy tat. I know it looks like you can see right through him, but that's only because there's nothing behind. You can't actually see through him. Well, you sort of can when I do that. So the pussy cat. Again, I decided that I wanted a fluffy cap. So for the little pussy cat, I switched that out for the whisper black rather than the flat plain black. So we went with whisper W99. And then for the little crow, I just stitched, I switched out, instead of using DMC black, I used anchor black because I think it gives a better coverage. So yeah, so I've actually made it, see, it's unheard of. I never make changes to the cord for threads and stuff like that, do I? I'm just like, yeah, I just went on a bit of a strange mission and decided that that's what I needed to do. So I've literally just got some vines to put up the top of the M and then I've got the end to stitch and the turkey. So I've just got this bit and the little bat at the top. And it's finished. Absolutely love it. Who would have thought? So this was the one that was on my little mini in the office. Um, I must admit, it did stay on there for well, from when I started it up until like I've just took it off. So this got 14 days. So this is 14 days of office time stitching and the odd evening when I was sitting in bed. But absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Who would have thought? So yeah, so there's a new start <laughs> and an almost finished. But it's not finished. But it will be finished. I'll give that a couple of days, I think. That's if I don't... I can't switch it out. How can I switch that out now? It's so close, isn't it, to a finish? And then I could FFO it. And actually get it hung up in autumn. So, yeah. So, yeah. It will be finished in a couple of days, I think. And I'll just have to keep it on. Just so that I can get it finished. So there you go, there is all of the stitching. You know, new starts, two new starts this month. One almost finish. One that's probably gonna, well, it's gonna take me till I'm very old. Um, so what else to tell you? See, do you see what I mean by the fact that I've sort of said how busy I've been and then I've been so super busy, you would think that I didn't get any stitching done, but I think because I was camping out in my, in my office and staying out of the way, I've actually get, got more stitching done than I, than I would normally. So I'm actually quite impressed with progress this month. Um, what else to tell you? So, as I was doing my Hands Across the Sea, it only made sense to actually watch a bit of Nicola from Hands Across the Sea. So I was watching one of her Floss Tube videos, and this is all her fault totally her fault in that one of her videos that she was she was talking about she got some project bags and the project bags that she got 
was from a company in Etsy, well, it's, a, it's a UK company, um, lady on Etsy, by the name of Patchwork Paw Prints on Etsy. Oh, curse. It's very rare that we can ever get our hands on these over here in the UK. So I fell down the rabbit hole, as you do, and ordered some of these lovely project bags. So the, the vinyl front ones, you all know that I did make my own. They're not as nice as these ones. These are like, oh, the workmanship in them are, is beautiful. And the fabrics are just, well, that is like a Jacobean fabric. I absolutely love that. As soon as I saw it, I've actually got, I've actually, yeah, fell down this rabbit hole of Jacobean. I actually really like the, the fabrics. But it's, you know, the pole, the pole that's in like a suede is all color coded. Um, little pink zip. Nice vinyl front so I can see what's in there. And she does like a little button, a paw, a paw print button. But yeah, absolutely love that. So because I got that one, I decided that I would get this one as well. So this one is like a, a woodland, grey woodland one. It's got my stuff in there from my, from my autumn project. But yeah, again, it's got a little suede pull, matching zip, and the button for the brand. Love the fabric, look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. So that is patchwork paw prints on Etsy in the UK or the vinyl bags. So because I couldn't help myself, I ordered them. It didn't take that long for them to come through either. So yeah, service was fabulous. And the quality of them is just, yeah, makes mine look really quite poor. <laughs> what else to tell you? Um, I told you about Andromeda and the lovely um, Welsh Stitcher Kelly from Instagram. Huge thank you to Kelly. See, this is why you've got to love Floss Tube, you know, some of the social media platforms that we use because, you know, people do actually reach out to you and be like, you know what, I can give you a hand with that if you like. I always feel like I don't like to sort of keep going, can someone help me, please? Because, yeah, you just sound all needy. And, but at the same time, it's like, well, that's what the community does. They're so, so forthcoming with trying to help people. And yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for to you all because you've all helped me on, in one way, shape or form. Um, and yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be able to do some of the things that I do now if it wasn't for the Floss Tube community. So I, mean, I don't know what, what we'd do without it. It's fabulous. Um, what else to tell you? So I got a little bit of love. So I've got a little bit of... Um, a little bit of love given to me. So the lovely Todd, who I'd been messaging a little bit about and um, about mirabilias, um, and he finished his first mirabilia, the Nora Corbett uh, Miss Christmas Eve, and I was just like, Do you know what? That looks gorgeous. Love him. He gifted me the chart as he's now finished it. So yeah, and you know when it's just like, I want to start it, but I'm like, oh, I can't start it because it's an, it's an, Andro it was, it's a mirabilia. I have to finish Andromeda before I start Miss it. Christmas Eve, don't I? Do you think? What would you do? Would you be like, no, get, bear in mind, I've got the amount of whips that I've got and some very big, large projects. What would you do if you was me? Would you throw caution to the wind and just be like, let's just start up because she's all festive and Christmassy. And she's not as big as Rose's of Province. But then I don't know if she's as big as Andromeda. I don't know. What do you reckon, people? Should I start up? Or should I behave myself and show some self-restraint? <laughs> but I absolutely love her. So even if I don't start her now, I, I will be starting her at some point. But it just seems right because it's Christmassy. Christmas is coming. But thank you, Todd. Thank you so, so much for sharing her with me. Um, what else to tell you? So I've, 
I treated myself on my birthday. It was my birthday. I have every right to treat myself. Um, so I bought a a new gadget. So and you, so I'm, oh, is it stitch related? It is sort of stitch related because I'm hoping that it's going to help me do some finishing when I get some smalls stitched. See, maybe that's why I went down the whole rabbit hole of the autumn smalls. And I do want to do some more small so that I can do some more finishing instead of just all these big projects where they just go on and on and on and you feel like you never get a finish. So I was thinking I need to throw some smalls in so that I get that, that satisfaction of, yeah, yeah, I finished something. So I couldn't help myself. I bought the Cricut Maker. I'll put a little picture here so you can see. Um... It cuts paper, so it's, you know, it's great for card making. It cuts vinyl, so it's great for organising and stickers and signs. and But it also cuts fabric. So I was thinking, well, that will help me with my whole, you know, creating of... Because I'm not very good at cutting stuff out. And I thought, well, this, is, this cuts it all out for me. I just pattern it in and, yeah, and it cuts it. So I fell down that rabbit hole. Of course, so far I haven't done anything with fabric with it, but I have done lots of papery and vinyl type things so if all of a sudden you see stickers all over my up you know all over the the units then you know I've gone crazy with the with the vinyl um but whilst I got that I did actually pick up a couple of you know quite ingenious things and when I say that these are not stitch related these are so one of the pets hates that I have is when I've got certain projects that are all crinkly and crunchy I don't want to load up my main iron and take everything to the iron. I found this. So this is like a mini multi-purpose ironing board. So it's all squishy and you can iron on it. But it's also got a cutting board in there and a cutting mat. So this is perfect for like my finishing when you're doing like your little smalls. It's got a suede area there so you can sort of like lay your fabrics and make sure you're happy with everything. And then if you turn that over, it's actually got like a sandpaper finish there. So you know like sometimes when you put your paper down and as you, as you, or you put your, your fabric down and then as you put another bit of fabric on, it moves. Well, you lay your first bit of fabric on there and then you lay the next bit so that you can actually layer it and pin it without everything moving. But equally, if you just want to sort of like play, working out where you want what, there's like this nice suede thing. But then when you close it, both sides of this, you can have it open, so that it would be a very big ironing board. Or you can have it closed, which more for, for our smalls is, is this. So I think this is more for like a quilter and people that do quilting. But it's like ingenious. So I'm like, I have to have one. With that, I also bought one of these. So... It's a Cricut Easy Press Mini. So this predominantly is used more for ironing on vinyls and, and bits and pieces, but it also irons your fabric without actually having to get a massive great iron out. And you know like when we're doing our finishing and you just need something that's really small that's just gonna quickly straighten everything up. Or before I do one of these videos, <laughs> she says, which I didn't do today, when I take things out the Q-snap, sometimes they just need a little line because they look a bit crinkled. Well, now I have this tiny little iron. And it is the mini but mighty Cricut Easy Press Mini. So it's got a little stand, so you heat it up. It's got a little button on the front. Three little lines for three different heat temperatures. And then you sit that on the side and it's tiny. I mean, if I put my hand next to it, See how small it is? But it works perfectly with my little mat. So if I've got a little small and I'm just trying to iron it all out so that I can press it and I can, you know, sew it all together or... I thought it was ingenious. And of course, I fell down this rabbit hole. So now all of a sudden I want to iron all these smalls that I don't actually own yet. But I will. So watch this space. Now that I've got this stuff, my plan is that where I can, every once in a while, I would like to try and get some smalls into the equation, just so that I'm just not bogged down with massive big projects all the time. 
because I do feel sometimes like I see all these people that get you know they do a lot of smaller projects and they're like oh I finished this and oh I finished that and I'm always up here's another whip it's the same one you saw last week it's the same one you saw six months ago and it's the same one the same one that you saw last year <laughs> but it's moving forwards I never get that yay I've got to finish so I need to throw some more smalls in Yes, it will mean that some of my bigger projects don't get as much progress on because I'll be focusing less on them. But hey, it's got to be about the enjoyment. And I do need, to, I do need that whole, yes, I've got to finish. So, so yeah. So my plan is that the rest of 2020, I will probably focus more on some of my other projects. But going forward in 2021 and possibly towards the end of 2020... I think I'm going to sort of try and make it so that I, I throw some either seasonal smalls in. Yeah, seasonal or monthly or just something so that I've got sort of either some smalls or things that I can sort of switch out. Because I've got big projects that hang on the wall, but I haven't got anything that sort of makes it all homely. You know, and I'll, I think that's the thing. I think I've been watching Floss Tube. See, a Floss Tube is... It's the biggest enabling platform, social media platform ever in, in, the, in the history. It's, it's one of those places that you go to thinking, oh, I just need something to watch or listen to whilst I'm doing what I'm doing. And then that's it. Then, just, yeah. It's like money's going everywhere. I need that. I have to have that. I don't need it, but I want it. I don't have to have it, but I really want it. So, yeah. So floss tube is the bane of my life, but I love it nevertheless, endlessly. So I've been totally enabled, and I think watching a lot of the a lot of the floss tubers, you know, like you look at Priscilla, you look at Java Girl Stitches, um, you look at Helen D, and they've all got um, what do you call them? Like so they decorate like a full house you know they decorate with full stuff they decorate with christmas stuff they decorate with halloween stuff see now over here it's like we don't i mean like porches i would love to decorate a porch we don't have porches i mean the whole pumpkin things not it just yeah it would have to sit out on the driveway i don't think it quite works in the same way um but i have got like eaves that hang over so I was thinking that maybe I might put a crate out there with a couple of pumpkins on a little wreath and maybe a instead of a fall sign although I think fall do you know what I never understand why we call it autumn and the Americans and I think Canadians call it fall fall makes so much more sense it's such a nice way of saying the leaves are falling autumn so British, isn't it? We're just so British. I mean, if I had my way, I'd have fall on a sign outside. But I think I'm going to have to go with autumn, just because, yeah. But yeah, I, I like, I mean, I, I like autumn as a, a time of year, and just not being outside. But I do like the whole, you know, golden leaves and everything's turning red instead of green and... Yeah, that whole transition it is lovely. Um, but I would love to decorate. And this is it. It's like unless I do some of these smalls and seasonal pieces, it makes no difference because it's like that I've, I've only got big projects up. I mean, admittedly, I have not got that many places that I could put seasonal stuff, but my plan is to change that. So I am trying to think of ingenious ways, you know, cabinets and little things that you can stand on the floor so that I can just sort of put a seasonal thing on there and then it'll make it look a little bit more homely and a little bit more yeah with the seasons that's the plan watch this space people who knows could go or go Pete Tong as always um but there we go so what else to tell you um I have no idea what this month what this month will bring Originally, I think the plan was that my husband was under the illusion that he was going to get one of those big walking boots put on this week for his leg, which would mean he wouldn't need crutches and he might be able to drive because he could take the boot off just to drive. That was his interpretation of it. 
Needless to say, we went to Fracture Clinic yesterday and he ended up falling out with the consultant because the consultants basically turned around and said that it's looking like he's going to have the cast on at least for another three weeks. So that makes it six weeks in a cast. He's not happy. So I have no idea where that leaves me um, and how much time I'm going to get for my stitching. I'm hoping that it's going to be very similar to this last month that I've sort of camped out and still managed to get lots of stitching done, but who knows. Um, whip go for October. Um, 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 so whip go, where is my whip go for October? Oh yeah. So the lovely Jessie Marie posted up the whip go numbers this month. So for October, the number seven and 14 came up which means I need to work on Autumn Promise and Alternative Reality. So Alternative Reality needs to get 100 stitches this month. And Autumn Promise, I didn't really put, because obviously it's not real stitching, it's more sort of like wrapping and stuff now. Um, I just sort of said Autumn Promise and I can do as much or as little on it as I like, just as long as I pull it out and I do something on it. So I'll either finish the bottom band or I might start some of the wrapping of the bars as part of my whip go for October. So watch this space. So there we go. I don't think this was a particularly quick video, was it? I think I probably rambled and waffled. I did say I had a headache today, so I wasn't going to be, you know, short and sweet and to the point. And hey, why not? Why not share with you some of my life stuff? Because it is life, you know. It changes. I tend to find that I start my stitching and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do lots of stitching this month. And then I come to you and I'm like, it didn't really work out. And then I have to explain why. So, not I have to explain why, but I like to explain why. So, there we go. That is October update. Um, no, it's not. See? <laughs> I need some sleep. <laughs> that is my September update. Lauren's back, dog is snoring. I have a big mess to clear up and tidy up and just enjoy a little bit of downtime before husband comes back. So thank you so, so much everyone for all the lovely comments, um, for all of the lovely support on the channel. Hopefully either by the time this video goes up or shortly after the results of the giveaway will go out as a separate video. So I will be announcing who the winners are I wanted to do it separate because this video I knew was going to be far too big to then put that on the end of. So, so yeah, so that's me done. So hopefully through the course of the month, I may find time to do either a stitch with me live or a stitch with me, but please don't hold me to that because who knows with hubby being around, that might actually prove almost impossible. So until next time, people, bye bye for now. <laughs>